Thanks very much, uh, Sarah. Thanks to uh, all of you for coming today. I wanted to uh, just give a couple of brief comments on the uh, consultations that we've just concluded uh, uh, with Director Patrushev, the director of the uh, Russian National Security Council. This is uh, uh, something that the uh, two presidents agreed in Helsinki. It was the uh, uh, one specific thing they agreed on that the two National Security Council staffs would carry on their discussions with a view to uh, deciding how to uh, restore in certain respects uh, uh, diplomatic and other exchanges between Russia and the United States in ways and uh, which we could cooperate and uh, uh, expand our uh, common efforts. So today what we did was uh, cover the whole range of issues that the uh, two countries have on uh, nonproliferation, on arms control, on a range of bilateral issues, uh, counterterrorism, uh, illegal immigration, cyber-related issues, uh, regional issues like Syria, the uh, broader Middle East, Afghanistan, and Ukraine. Um, I think we made a lot of uh, progress. We identified certain areas where uh, lines of communication could be uh, restored and uh, uh, more work done by the affected agencies, State Department, Defense Department, other agencies as well. Uh, there were some where uh, the uh, areas of disagreement uh, remain. We didn't see uh, a, a much utility in, in resuming discussion. There are going to be some things where we're going to consider inside the United States government, consider more fully what our position is, and then decide to proceed from there. Um, uh, uh, Secretary Patrushev, I think, is having his own uh, press conference soon. Uh, we might have had a uh, joint statement, but uh, I felt it was important to mention election meddling. Uh, which we raised a number of times during these uh, consultations today, which lasted uh, a little bit over five hours. Uh, but uh, we weren't able to reach agreement on that, so we decided to go ahead. We'll each speak individually, which is what I'm doing now. But on the whole, I would say we made considerable progress. I think that's what the two presidents had in mind for us, and uh, uh, hopefully they'll agree with our assessment that, in fact, we did make progress. So let me just stop there, and I'm happy to answer questions following the procedure that Sarah outlined. Um, yes, Mr. Bolton, on, um, if we may just ask a question, Stephanie Nebehe Reuters, on sanctions, a two-pronged question, uh, whether in your discussions you gave Mr. Patrushev any details or uh, raised the issue of the Microsoft hacking case that emerged this week. Um, did you ask him whether there was any state, Russian state role behind that? And then on other sanctions relating to Iran, did, uh, was that discussed? Uh, and did Mr. Patrushev seek any um, waivers or, um, you know, exceptions to the November deadline? Right. Well, I didn't uh, raise the Microsoft uh, press announcement, it, it not being an institution of the U.S. government. Um, we didn't get into that specific. Uh, we did talk about Iran and the economic sanctions, and I explained that our objective uh, in light of the President's decision to withdraw in May from the Iran nuclear deal was to put maximum pressure uh, on the regime uh, and to tighten up the sanctions so that they would be uh, at a minimum equal to the sanctions that were in effect in 2015, but that we would actually be looking to tighten them, make them more extensive and more effective. Uh, I've said uh, many times our objective is to have as few waivers uh, as possible, uh, and, uh, and that's something we're going we're gonna to pursue. Then they, they didn't request any waivers. That, that subject didn't come up. Good afternoon, Vladimir Kostarev, Russian TASS News Agency. Uh, recently in uh, Jerusalem, uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, Russia, uh, as, uh, you mentioned uh, that you think that Russia in, is interested in uh, Iranian forces uh, uh, leaving uh, Syria. 
Uh, have you discussed uh, this question with uh, Mr. Patrushev? Um, has you got any understanding on uh, Iranian forces uh, uh, coming back to Iran from Syria? Thank you. Yeah. Well, this question of uh, what to do with the Iranian forces, and I would say both regular and irregular in Syria, was something we discussed. Uh, following on to what the two uh, presidents discussed in Helsinki, uh, our objective is that all Iranian forces return to Iran. Uh, now, that, uh, that would be an objective that I think uh, President Putin would share. Uh, it's far from easy to achieve, and so we talked about a variety of uh, ways in which it might be accomplished through a series of steps. Uh, uh, really not because we were here to negotiate that point, but to examine uh, what might be possible for others to discuss uh, following on from this. Uh, and it was in that connection uh, that uh, Secretary Patrushev uh, brought up the uh, suggestion that the Russians had uh, made previously to Israel, France, and Germany about a uh, uh, geographic constriction of Iranian forces in exchange for uh, the United States suspending the imposition of the oil sanctions in uh, now set for early November, and that was a suggestion we had rejected before, and we rejected it again today. The sanctions are coming back into effect, that's clear. Uh, we did, however, go on to discuss what other possibilities uh, there might be. As I say, that was really the, the, uh, the, the broad objective we had to take the discussion that the leaders had and uh, try and spread it out and make it more specific and find concrete ways to proceed. So it was certainly, uh, again here today, a major subject of conversation, as it was for the two presidents in Helsinki. Uh, Nick Cumming, Bruce, New York Times. Did you um, get onto the subject of um, start negotiations? Were you able to agree a date for uh, resuming talks on extending that treaty? And if not, what's holding you back? And as a, as a writer to that, could you be a bit specific about what areas you did see progress in today? Yeah. Well, we, we didn't set a date uh, for the discussion about what to do about START, and I'd be sure you characterize it that way, what to do about new START, uh, because there are a number of possibilities that the U.S. government itself uh, has to consider uh, what our position should be. Should we extend new START? Should we renegotiate it? Should we drop that model of arms control and return to what we call the Treaty of Moscow in 2002, negotiated in the Bush administration, a very different non-Cold War method of, uh, uh, of, uh, of a treaty on strategic weapons? That's a possibility. All of these are things that the United States is going to consider, along with what to do with the uh, INF Treaty, which was also a subject we discussed today. So part of our objective with respect to arms control was to uh, lay out what, uh, what our thinking is in, in a transparent way and recognizing the U.S. government still reaching its final position so the Russians could see uh, how we saw it. It is, it is uh, I think, a very useful step to take, but we are very, very early in the process of considering what we're going to do with New START or the INF Treaty. Hi, Ben Simon. I work for the AFP News Agency. If I understood your introduction, it's, it's the, issue, the discussions over election tampering, which was basically the barrier to a joint statement. Um, I'm wondering, did you hear anything today that gave you optimism that Russia was not committed to interfering in the midterm elections? And what messages did you specifically send to warn your counterpart today that that would not be tolerated by the U.S. administration? Uh, there, were, there were some double negatives in that question if I heard it correctly, so <laughs> at the risk of restating it uh, uh, or to put my answer in the form of an answer to a question that might have been asked but wasn't, I made it clear that we wouldn't tolerate meddling in 2018 uh, and that we were prepared to take uh, necessary steps to prevent it from happening. Uh, we talked about it in a variety of ways in the uh, area of uh, cyber and information technology exchanges, which we had stopped between the United States and Russia uh, earlier this year. Uh, and I said at this point I didn't really see the circumstances were right to resume them again. 
Uh, I don't want to understate how much progress we made in other areas, but in that area it was uh, uh, as I've described. Okay, we'll take, why don't we take two more, right, one from each more. side. Okay, um, Frederick Koller for the newspaper Le Temps in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. Um, I have a question regarding the, the UN organi organization here in Geneva, and I would like to know what's your administration, the President Trump administration, how you look at this, uh, the importance of Geneva and the UN here. Uh, as far as I understand, you still don't have uh, nominated any ambassador here in the mission, US mission. Why is it so? And maybe just a few words uh, regarding late uh, Kofi Annan. Uh, he just passed away. You used to be uh, confronting him uh, in the past, and uh, I would be glad to have a few words for, uh, from you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, look, uh, uh, it's sad for uh, uh, Kofi Annan's family and friends and the UN community, and uh, 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 we obviously mourn his, uh, his passing. Um, on the uh, UN agencies in Geneva, you know, uh, I've been to Geneva at least a million times in my diplomatic career, so uh, I've uh, worked with all the agencies here. Uh, it's a continuing U.S. Uh, priority to make the U.N. more effective, uh, to see its operations conducted in a more efficient way, to see the agencies stick to their respective mandates, uh, and to cooperate within the U.N. system to avoid duplication and overlap. Uh, and a lot of that activity, a lot of the budget authority is obviously centered here in Geneva, uh, so it's, uh, it remains a very high priority. There, there are a number of uh, embassies that haven't been filled yet, in some cases uh, because of uh, a lack of action by Congress. We're certainly working on that, for example, uh, to get our uh, ambassador to the UN agencies in Vienna confirmed in the near future is a very high priority for the administration. Uh, and to get somebody here, uh, obviously, is important as well. So we're working on all those things. It's been a difficult uh, process uh, since the beginning of President Trump's uh, administration to get uh, uh, nominees confirmed both for the judicial and the executive branches, and we've obviously got very high priority for us coming up with hearings and the confirmation of uh, Judge Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court in September. But before the Senate goes out in early October, uh, it's certainly uh, uh, our priority to get as many of our nominees confirmed as, uh, as we can. Um, Mr. Bolton, um, yeah, from the Imogen folks, BBC. Uh, Mr. Bolton, it's, it's not been a very easy week for um, your president. And I'm just wondering, as National Security Advisor, whether you at all, given the events of this week and admissions of payoffs, and you've mentioned election meddling, whether you're ever concerned that your own president is a security risk? Of course not. I mean, that's a silly question. Uh, and uh, I just spoke to him literally a few minutes ago, and uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, performed here in exactly the way I think the two leaders would have expected us to. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, have a little faith in the American people who elected him president. Thank you very much. <laughs>